Hi everyone, my name is Erica Pate and I'm a fruit crop specialist with the Ontario Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs. This is the first webinar for strawberry and raspberry IPM training. And this webinar will cover the different strawberry and raspberry production systems in Ontario. Other webinars will be available online and a live webinar will occur on May 12th from 1 to 3 p.m., which will cover insects and diseases to monitor for this year in strawberries and raspberries. So make sure to register for that one beforehand. Okay, to start off, we'll go over the growth and development of a strawberry plant. So the plant is made up of the crown from where the leaves, runners, branch crowns, flower trusses, and roots grow. So the roots grow about four to six inches deep into the soil. See the leaves here each have three leaflets. And this is the runner from where the daughter plants grow and is how strawberries are propagated. Okay, here we have a closer look at a strawberry flower cluster. And you can see this is the king, the primary bloom here, which produces the first and largest berry. Each flower cluster will have a king bloom, two secondary, four tertiary, and sometimes quaternary blooms. Today I'm going to speak about two different production systems in Ontario, the June bearing matted row system and a day neutral plasticulture system. The June bearing matted row is the traditional strawberry production system in Ontario. And it's a perennial system where planting begins in the spring and then harvest occurs the next June and July. Runnering is encouraged in that first year because the runners lead to daughter plants, which fill in the field. Uh, runners are produced during long days and warm temperatures. And because in June bearing production, growers rely on these daughter plants to fill in the row, they are planted at a lower density than day neutral strawberries, which I'll speak about next. In June bearing production, flower buds are initiated in the fall during short days and cool temperatures, uh, which is why they are also called short day cultivars. They then go dormant over the winter and will flower in the spring, which is beginning soon, depending on your location. Uh, I have seen fields in bloom already where row covers were used to bring bloom on a little bit early. And growers can usually get two to three years out of this system, depending on any pests or diseases. June bearing strawberries are planted as bare root plants with a transplanter in the spring. And growers can use a single row or a double row planter. And in this picture on the right, you can see a double row planter. In the first year, the focus is on producing daughter plants and establishing the field. So any blossoms need to be removed so the energy goes towards runner development and plant establishment instead of fruiting. And runners need to be trained to stay in the row. A fertilizer will be applied and weeds and pests need to be controlled and monitored throughout that first season. And regular irrigation is important to ensure optimum growth. In the winter after that first year of establishment, strawberries are covered with straw for winter protection and removed in the spring. Uh, so that's that picture on the right here where you can see the strawberry plants just after the straw was removed. That was a few weeks ago. Straw also helps keep the fruit clean during harvest so they aren't lying on the ground and also helps with disease management. Some growers will use row covers to overwinter their June bearing crop instead of straw. So bloom starts mid-May typically, but as I mentioned, sometimes row covers can be used to bring bloom on a little bit earlier and therefore an earlier harvest. Strawberries are self-fertile, but size and yield can be increased when cross-pollinated by bees or other insects. So it's good if you see pollinators when you're out in the field. And then once you see bloom, it's about 30 days until harvest. Because they bloom relatively early, they can be damaged by late frosts. Strawberry flowers are particularly susceptible to frost damage. Growers will use irrigation or row covers to protect the blossoms during the cold frost at night. Uh, and the irrigation works to protect the berries by releasing heat as the water freezes, which protects the blossoms. If there was no protection, there would be a black center on the blossoms, as you can see here on the top right. Uh, and ultimately, these berries won't develop or will result in misshapen fruit, as you can see in this slide. Uh, so these berries are unmarketable or they won't have to develop at all. As I mentioned, harvest begins 30 days after bloom. There are early, mid, and late season varieties, and growers will typically grow a combination of these varieties to lengthen the season. Uh, an example of some of these varieties are Wendy and Annapolis are popular early season varieties, Kent and Jewel popular mid-season varieties, and Valley Sunset and Malwina popular late varieties. And this can be important to note when you're scouting because some of these varieties need to be managed and monitored separately. Malwina, for example, is a particularly late variety, so it blooms after the other varieties. So you'll need to monitor for those insects and pests that affect bloom and green fruit at a different time than those other varieties that you monitored. 
After harvest, growers will renovate their fields to prevent the rows and plants from becoming overcrowded. They will mow down the old leaves, narrow the rows, apply herbicide, fertilize, and this can also be a good time to apply a miticide if necessary. So after they renovate, uh, growers can overwinter this field again to harvest a second year and even a third year, depending on their system and on the health of the field. Okay, I'm gonna move on to day neutral production system now. Uh, as you can see here, day neutrals are usually grown on plastic culture. About 25% of growers in Ontario have day neutrals. And using a combination of June bearing strawberries and day neutral strawberries means that growers can harvest berries from June until October. And some of the varieties that you'll see in Ontario are Albion and Seascape. Day neutrals are typically planted on plastic, which helps with moisture management, weed management, and helps the roots to warm quickly in the spring and bring on the crop earlier. So you can see the white raised beds here and uh, black plastic is also used. They are planted at a higher density because growers are not relying on runners, because day neutral cultivars typically don't runner well, and because they're on plastic. Day neutrals are planted first thing in the spring and will begin harvest in July, continuing until October. They are not sensitive to day length and it will initiate flower buds regardless of day length, which is why they are called day neutrals. And they will bloom continuously through the season, which is something to keep in mind when you're monitoring and looking for those pests that attack bloom and green fruit. Growers can also plant in the fall with plugs to begin harvest in June and get the earliest berries on the market, or they can overwinter their spring planted day neutral crop for a second uh, harvest in the spring. Here's a comparison of the two different types of strawberries we've talked about. The June bearing strawberry on the left, where the fruit buds are formed in short days and harvest is in June and July, versus day neutrals where fruit buds are formed at any day length and harvest begins the first year it is planted and can continue into the fall. This is what a basic system looks like for day neutrals. So they plant in year one on plastic. You can see the black plastic in this picture. Uh, in the first year, they remove blossoms for approximately six weeks or until the plant has six to eight new leaves. Uh, and then you can see they harvest that first year, begin in July, and continue until the first frost. Uh, some growers will overwinter their day neutrals under row cover, you can see in this bottom left picture, and possibly keep them uh, for a crop in the spring, and then maybe even a second summer crop, depending on their system. Day neutral planting can be established with dormant bare root plants or with plug plants. Dormant bare root plants will be cheaper, easier to plant, but harvest will be a little bit later. And then plugs on the right here are more expensive, will be harder to plant, but will harvest earlier. So here's a typical yield curve of day neutral strawberries in their first year. These were planted in April or May, and then harvest begins in July, continuing until October. And then if these were overwintered, harvest will begin again in June. And then there's a slight gap in production before harvest begins again in late July, continuing until October. Okay, so we've covered day neutral strawberry production and June bearing strawberries, and now we're gonna switch gears into raspberry production systems. Today, I'm gonna to focus on summer fruiting raspberries and fall bearing raspberries. And these raspberries are either produced in the field or in protected systems like high tunnels. And long cane raspberry production is relatively new in Ontario, which I will speak about briefly. There are two types of raspberries grown in Ontario, summer fruiting raspberries and fall bearing raspberries. Summer fruiting raspberries produce fruit on one-year-old canes, the floor canes that you can see right here with the F. So these floor canes will bloom and produce raspberries this year. And the prime canes, which are the new canes that grow every year, will grow in year one and then fruit in year two as the floor canes. So these prime canes grow every year and then the second year they are the floor canes. After they are done fruiting, they will die and need to be pruned out for the next year's floor canes. Summer fruiting raspberries typically begin harvest early July for about three to four weeks. Some summer fruiting raspberry growers will choose to produce in a biennial system where they fruit a field or a row every other year. So in year one, the floor canes will fruit and they will control the primocanes. In this diagram, you can see that the emerging primocanes are being controlled, uh, which leaves just the floor canes there that are gonna be harvested. And then after harvest, the old floor canes and the primary canes will be mowed down. And then the next year is focused on vegetative growth of those primary canes. So this is that second year where they're starting with nothing. That field was either mowed in the, uh, in the fall or in the spring. And then the primary canes are encouraged 
uh, and established. And the third year is similar to the first, where the floor canes are fruited while the emerging primate canes are controlled. So this biennial system reduces labor for pruning and makes harvest easier. So this is what biennial production will look like. You have your established floor canes on one side where they are going to harvest that this year, and then your emerging primate canes. See, there are no floor canes that are in the way for these primate canes to establish, and these will be harvested next year. Uh, so there's summer fruited and fall bearing raspberries, like I mentioned. Fall bearing raspberries produce fruit every year on new canes, so on those primate canes. So they are primate cane producing raspberries. So every year the new canes will grow fruit and then be mowed down. And the harvest season begins in early August and continues into October. Fall bearing raspberries can also produce fruit on overwintering canes if they aren't mowed down all the way, if they leave a bench cut, uh, and these will begin earlier in the season. Growers will also produce raspberries in tunnels or protected structures, and these tunnels protect the raspberries from the rain and the wind and also help extend the season to provide some extra warmth. And I mentioned uh, long cane raspberry production, which is a relatively new system in Ontario, and it is where raspberries are grown in soilless substrate and in a protected system, so in those high tunnels like you just saw, or in an umbrella. Okay, so thank you for joining me for an overview of the different production systems in Ontario. So make sure to check out the other videos that are going to be posted on the YouTube channel, and then register for the May 12th training where we will go over insects and diseases. Thanks, everyone.